Question I asked you just after seven o'clock. Have we become a nation of NIMBYs? You heard of a sequence of constructions and developments all brought to a grinding halt by those that were protesting against them. Let's talk now to Joe Rukin, who's the campaign manager for Stop HS2 from Kenilworth in Warwickshire. Hi, Joe. Evening, Mark. So do you think we've become a nation of NIMBYs? No, well, this is the thing. It's, you know, it's the big society and localism when it suits, and it's NIMBYism when it doesn't. And uh, what we found is that NIMBYism is a you know, derogative term which is used by people who want to dismiss any you know, honest, rational, well-thought argument isn't it used by what they want. Isn't it used by people against those who they think actually approve of whatever the development is, just want it happening somewhere else? No, well, this is the thing. We, we, uh, the Stop HS2 campaign, we get called NIMBYs all the time, and it's simply a way of attempting to lower the debate. You know, unfortunately, this is what you know, political debate has come to in this country, by demonising the opposition. And we, it, we, we're seeing, you know, it's NIMBYs versus the national interest, and it's simply a way to try and label us and dismiss the arguments we're making, because we would say that HS2, our, our specific issue, isn't in the national interest. And it's what, what, what has happened with our campaign, of course, it's, it was local concerns that got people interested in the first place. And we've got a great example of, you know, someone who, whose house is actually going to be knocked down as a result of this. And when he first found out about HS2, he said, well, if it's in the national interest, I'll take the money. You know, I'll go. I, I won't like it. But if it's in the national interest, I'll take that here. Three, three days later, he was writing a paper, why HS2 must be stopped. And... This is the thing. We've been called NIMBYs. The previous Secretary of State for Transport called us Luddites, which is a great laugh because he's advocating more trains and we were advocating investment in broadband instead. We've had advertising showing you know, mansions of men in bowler hats uh, with you know, their lawns or our jobs captions underneath it. I was wondering, Joe, if, ha- if you thought that the, the, that the atmosphere had changed ever so slightly with, the, uh, with what happened in, in East London at the Olympic Park in 2012. I spoke earlier to the, the Chair of Planning Studies at Reading University, Professor Gavin Parker, and he wondered if what the nation had been able to do with a, with a grand project, a nine billion project there, and keep everybody happy, assuage those fears, bring it in on time, actually might change the direction of protest and planning in this country. Clearly, you don't see it that way. Well, I, you know, the, the Olympics is a, is a, bit, of a bit of an odd one because obviously, you know, we had a great, we had a great three weeks, but the, the, the hangover of whether or not the legacy carries on and, and whether or not it turns out to be a white elephant the investment itself is still up in the air. Like people say when we're opposing HS2, they say, look at HS1. Well, HS1 has been an actual absolute financial basket case. You know, the Public Accounts Committee and the National Audit Office a couple of months ago were saying it's going to cost £10 billion more than expected because no one is using it. But when you talk to people who live along the line, and I, I haven't talked to them, but I've watched a few documentaries about them, they all sort of come out of their houses and say, well, actually, it's all right now, it's there, we, we don't worry about it. We protested before because we were worried about what it might be like, but now it's there, it's, it's quite all right. Yeah, but that's the thing. With HS1, they made a lot of concessions uh, which made it better, which they have not made with HS2. And HS2 is a different animal. It's unfair to compare the two because of the speeds involved. Because I suppose, I suppose Jack, the, the reason I'm interrupting is not... We did do a whole, whole programme on HS2 when the route came out. I was wanted to get away slightly from those arguments because we did do them for, for an hour and a half and talk more about the power, if you like, of those people who, in a somewhat pejorative way, you have argued, are labelled NIMBYs. You think that we, we have become a nation of protesters and that's a good thing? I think I think that you know people being able to have a say in what goes on in their communities and also what goes on in the country as a whole is is a you know a massive good thing for our democracy if of course there is you know a, any impact the problem is that we've you know we we've shouted a lot and we've got a lot of attention now whether we actually affect the process is another matter and you know the politicians are slowly listening obviously the leadership of the, the political parties aren't but because we've been able to come together, because we've been able to fundraise, because we've been able to work together, and the internet has been you know, a massive boon for us, being able to, you know, send emails to hundreds of people in one go. Uh, because of that, we've been able to mount a solid campaign. We've been able to raise money for legal challenges, which haven't reported back yet, and we've got the message out. Mm. The problem is that we get labelled NIMBYs, and it's just a simple way of trying to say. 
you know, we might as well say these people are selfish. Well, now what we would say is we're sensible because we have actually bothered to look at the plans and understand them. And okay, it's Joe, very easy to label people NIMBYs, okay, and it's just ha- not reasonable. We'll have to end it there. Thank you so much. Joe Rukin, who's the campaign manager of Stop HS2 from Kenilworth in Warwickshire.